Hey, what's up? This is Cody the Coin Raptor, and let's talk about some crypto chart TA. All right, so here we have our Bitcoin chart TA, and the pattern that I've drawn here is a bearish pennant. Okay, so in the bearish pennant, you have you have both a a reduction in the the highs, you have lower highs, and then you have higher lows, making this a pointed figure right here. So well, one thing I pointed out uh, earlier this morning on my Twitter account is when we we're about right here. So I said, we're going to come down to uh, about 19,600, 19,700 in that region, and we're going to pull under it. And so that's exactly what we saw happen today. It actually came under this level here, and it went down all the way. You can see the wick. It went on down all the way to about 19,500, and then it was bought up immediately all the way back up again, and it, it wound up um, much higher here in, in the, in the 20,000 region. So what that tells me is that this this uh, the, the demand below 20,000 is extremely high right now. So any sort of dips you see below 20,000, they have all been bought up. There is a lot of demand coming in, a lot of uh, users and investors who want Bitcoin under $20,000, they want to come in and buy it because 20k has been a very strong psychological support level. It's a nice and round number. And on top of that, we're also trading below the realized price and the 200-week moving average. All right. So with this pattern, though, the way this pattern is going to play out is you're going to have this, what they call the pole here, right? The bearish flag pennant. It's probably going to come back down again and touch this uh, this region of support at about 19,700, maybe around 19,900 in that region. It's going to come back down, and it's going to touch that level again, and it should... Uh, by the time these two points meet, or maybe a little bit after that, it should either break the upside or push to the downside. And since I think this is a bearish uh, formation, most likely what we're going to see is we're going to see uh, some move to the downside still. I still believe that there's going to be some some testing, again, of this support level. And if the support level breaks, then we could potentially go and revisit those lows uh, or the next support level is going to be about 18,900. And then the next level below that is our June low for Bitcoin. So we'll have to, we'll ha I'll keep, I'll keep um, an eye on this and then I'll try to give you guys up to date information. Usually I like to put out the most up to date information on my Twitter account. So if you want to see that, follow me on Twitter. So we'll go ahead and take a look at Ethereum as well. Ethereum is, let me zoom out a little bit here. Ethereum is still in this upward trend line, uh, this upward channel. It's really, really close. It's been at this level for like the past couple of days where it's just hugging the bottom part of this channel. And it, if it breaks through this level, then we could see it go and retrace all the way back here to 1420. And then again, down in this region about 1350 or so. So that's entirely possible. RSI on this is 46, so it's not oversold. It's not overbought. And Ethereum could definitely move down as we move through the next couple of days. But the big story today is the dollar index coming back with a vengeance. Well, I said before uh, yesterday that it, we were showing very strong signs of consolidation here. So these this like whole week uh, worth of consolidation in which it was uh, the, the lows, uh, in which it found support here, and instead it decided to, to trade sideways. And now it's been consolidating all that uh, all this this whole price range and it's pushed higher uh, to a point where we're currently above this resistance level so it's above 109 um, about a point three or so and it has pushed completely through that level and now we can basically see at this point it's pretty clear that this double topping uh, pattern has is not going to play out because uh, with the dollar index, it seems like it's just going to keep pushing higher. We're probably going to get some sideways consolidation here, and then it's going to push to the upside. And the reason why, we, again, the reason why we look at the dollar index is because Bitcoin tends to trade inversely. And again, we've seen Bitcoin push. Uh, we've seen the dollar index push through that that resistance level. OK, and then we've seen Bitcoin fall through that support. So, I mean, like I said, they're they're inversely correlated when you when you look at the uh, the charts here. OK, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin dominance as well. And Bitcoin dominance is fading. It is falling rapidly. 
it's been down to uh, about 39%. It's at 39% right now, but it is rapidly approaching the support level at about 39 uh, 39 and a half or so in that region. And the reason why this is important, why we want to watch this Bitcoin uh, dominance percentage is because it's going to give us an idea of what investors are doing. So uh, as this dominance level, uh, as it decreases, that means investors are putting more money into altcoins, okay? Either it's going to be stable coins or it's going to be other altcoins, things like Ethereum. So this is just an important thing to pay attention to. And if it breaks below this support level, then let me go ahead and back this chart out a little bit. But if it breaks to the support level, that's big news because it's bounced several times at this support level, including many times over the past year. And then even going as far back as May 18th uh, or May of 2018, it bounced at that level as well. So this is this is big. If it falls below this level, we are in a new territory for Bitcoin dominance. And uh, that would signify that either investors are getting spooked out of the market and buying stable coins and want to stay on the sidelines or you have um, something like Ethereum, the Ethereum dominance pushing through this resistance level here and Ethereum increasing its dominance in the crypto space. Um, and that would likely be due to a strong uh, merge, a very successful merge in which people are jumping into Ethereum. Investors are jumping into Ethereum and getting out of Bitcoin. Okay. All right, so one important thing I wanted to point out is that the, uh, I always take a look at this Bitcoin wallet sizes. So this, if you go in to look into Bitcoin, there is a Bitcoin wallet sizes uh, chart. And what it's showing you is uh, all the Bitcoin wallets that are greater than one Bitcoin. So recently we hit a, a milestone on this. We actually cleared 900,000 addresses that have greater than one Bitcoin. Now that's the highest point it's ever been in Bitcoin's entire history. So this bear market has given many people the opportunity to become whole coiners. And, and so again, we've reached 900,000 uh, wallets that actually have at least one Bitcoin. It's pretty amazing. All right. Another really important thing I wanted to point out here is that Celsius has put out some more information on uh, what's going on with their bankruptcy situation. So what they're saying here is that they have uh, an update, and the update is they filed a motion requesting the authority to reopen withdrawals for specific custody and withhold accounts. Okay, They're focusing on two categories of assets for users that do not have outstanding loans. The first, those currently owed in custody and withhold accounts that were never in the earn or borrow programs okay and then the second cer certain custody and withdrawal and withhold accounts where transfers from the earn or bur uh, borrow programs were in the aggregate less than about seventy five hundred dollars okay which is a specific legal threshold all right so what that means is they don't believe that the assets that were in the custody and withhold accounts are not constituted as property of the of the estate okay so let me try to translate this a little bit so celsius realizes that those specific accounts those two different types of accounts okay ones that were not in the earn or borrow program and then ones that were uh with a um a value that's less than seventy five hundred dollars those are not uh, constituted as property of the estate, okay? And again, this is just for custody accounts, not for earn or borrow accounts, but they're saying that they're trying to free up those funds for the users who put their money in the custody accounts and did not have their funds in the earn accounts. But I've been following this story. I'm going to get you guys some more information. Uh, I don't know when this is going to take to effect, but their next um, court date, the next hearing date is going to be sometime in September. But I will give you some more information uh, as I get it, more up-to-date information, because this is really fascinating what's going on here with Celsius. And I realize that a lot of people have had money in Celsius. All right, so that's all I've got for you guys today. If you like this content, please let me know. Please like and subscribe, and also follow me on Twitter. I would greatly appreciate that. This is Cody the Corn Raptor, signing out.